It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is my friend, John Manarazzo, and we're going to be discussing his journey, how he ended up working in Christian media, uh, and all the different things. I don't quite know what he's going to share with me, so I'm excited to uh, bring that to you. I had the pleasure of being interviewed on John's podcast a number of weeks back, and so I am in kind bringing him onto my podcast to introduce some of my viewers and listeners to his fantastic content, so excited to do that. Uh, if in the process of listening to us, you have questions about Christian media. John's involved in producing Christian television. He's also got a podcast like I do. I've also been podcasting for about nine years. So if you have Christian media related questions, we might have answers for you. So uh, drop a comment, uh, especially if you're watching on Facebook, and we might have time to answer that during the show. Uh, let me bring John into the feed and we will get things started. John, my friend, welcome to the show. I've been looking forward to this. Thanks, Sean. It's great to have you. Or it's great to not be. It's great to be on your program because the last time we talked, you were on mine. Yeah, that's great. We're like we're like dueling podcast hosts. You know, who knows which one of us yeah. is going to be interviewing as the conversation <laughs> moves along? Uh, now, you and I, we've had the pleasure of working together for a number of years, just with the different right. roles I've had that are marketing and PR related in the book industry. Uh, but now we're starting to collaborate more on podcast stuff, which is exciting. I feel like it's a time for. Uh, people to collaborate and new media to rise up to increase right. our voices. So I'm excited to have the chance to do this. However, I know you're going to be brand new to a lot of my viewers and listeners. So let's kick this off by having you share a bit of your origin story. If you've got superpowers, special abilities, this is the time to clue us into those. So take it away, man. What do we need to know about you? Yeah, well, I don't think I have any superpowers unless you can count wiggling this ear, but that's that's about as good that's as I get. pretty special. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in a Christian family. I was homeschooled and um, really went to a great church and really met the Lord for myself and made that decision when I was 15. I mean, I prayed the prayer when I was four years old. Um, but whenever I, whenever I was 15, I decided that I was going to really live for the Lord. That was kind of my crisis of faith moment where I was um, I had basically had the question where or the thought that okay, sin is fun. So if God's not real, then there's no consequence for sin. But if God is real, then there is a consequence for sin. And God probably has a better plan for my life than I do if I'm, if I'm even thinking about this. So um, really went through uh, a, a decent search, read books like um, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. And through just asking a lot of different people questions, I came to the conclusion that I really believed what I had learned my whole life and that I was going to, um, I was going to live for Jesus for this, from this moment on for my own, not just live on my parents' faith, but have my own. And then I started doing missions trips in the summers. And that really changed my life because I eventually, after I graduated high school, I went into youth with a mission and I did that for eight years. I thought it was just going to be a gap year. And then God uh, led me to be there for eight years. Uh, so a missionary to 15 different countries, preaching the gospel, uh, I've been a part of the, the group that I was with. We saw it during those eight years, maybe a little bit more, uh, we saw over 100,000 people make commitments to live for Jesus. Um, and so that was really, really cool. Uh, and just to be able to say that, like, hey, we have contact cards and ways to connect these people to churches uh, locally um, in most of those outreaches. That's one of my one of my favorite uh, things that I've been able to be a part of. Um, during that time, I got to do a school for radio broadcasting within Youth with a Mission uh, in Cape Town, South Africa. And so I got to do a, a crash course doing that and really fell in love with radio and thought that God was going to open up some doors for me in radio. But uh, my skills of learning how to edit for audio then gave me the opportunity to edit videos of some of the mission trips that I was on. And then one thing led to another and the, the executives at the TV station that I work at now saw some of my work and said, you really do have a gifting for this. And we want to take you under, uh, I want to take you under my wing. He was producing a TV show at the time called his place. And uh, which was a quasi Christian 
soap opera slash interview slash live music. It was a crazy show. It was a great way to kind of cut my teeth in the production, in the studio production world. And then um, as God was calling me off the mission field, he was calling me to that. And then God just opened up some doors for me to actually work there. Um, and then uh, in 2015, I ended up being the, or I became the producer for our daily program which was called Real Life. Now it's called Hope Today. And I've been producing that ever since. Uh, just over 1,350 episodes, I believe, if I uh, if my count's correct. And so um, I had a lot of guests on the TV program. And so I get to do a lot of research and uh, find out who these people are and prepare the hosts and then prepare the guests. And right now we're in a virtual world. So we are doing a lot of uh, Skype testing and making sure that everybody's uh, everybody's setups are in a good situation so that they're going to be uh, good for broadcast TV. So I spent a lot of my days uh, working with people, trying to figure that stuff out, but getting them prepared for uh, the on air as well. And then a couple of years ago, I started a podcast called Along the Way. God gave me a vision for that. Uh, since my radio school, I had uh, I've had people tell me that, hey, you should do a podcast. And my idea was, or my thought was always, I have no idea what I would want to talk about for that long. Um, and if I want to, if I'm going to start something, I want to be able to not just do one episode or one thing. I want to be able to continue with it. And once God gave me the vision and the plan for my podcast, uh, with based around the, it's conversations based around the Emmaus Road story of how the disciples were walking with Jesus, but had no clue that it was actually, it was actually him until they sit down at the table. Jesus blesses the food and breaks the bread. And then their eyes are opened and then poof, he's gone. And uh, then they, in Luke 24, 32, they turn to each other and say, weren't our, weren't our hearts burning within us along the way as he was revealing the scriptures to us. So I don't want to miss those moments in my life. And so I want to learn from other people's experiences and their stories of how God has walked with them. And they've now recognized that and they've learned from that. And so when God showed me that he's everything that he's equipped me with, he's given me along the way. And he's also given me a lot of people that were going to be guests on my program, on my podcast along the way through my work on TV. And so basically I can kind of sum up my life and how God's led me to where I'm at right now is I'm just trying to be available and obedient. So whenever God says jump, I say how high and which direction, where do you want me to go? And um, kind of let him take over the rest. And uh, so that's a summary as, as I think that's probably the quickest I've done that in a while. So, yeah, <laughs> that was a great, like 10,000 foot flyover. I love it. And I just realized you're wearing green for St. Patrick. So you got the mug to match and yes, everything. I do. Way to represent as a German Irish guy, I'm failing today because I'm wearing my signature <laughs> black as I do almost every day uh -huh. uh, working from home. Maybe next St. Patrick's Day, I will actually uh, have things all together and wear green as well. I've failed in yeah. that regard today. Um, tell us a little bit about, about being homeschooled. Uh, you're, yeah. you're old enough that you were homeschooled in the age when it wasn't quite as popular as it was when my wife and I started homeschooling. So was that a yeah. conviction your parents had situational because of where you guys live? Like why homeschooling? So it was uh, really the Lord gave my mom a dream and um, the, in this dream, she was, she was giving birth to a baby in a toilet. And uh, like my head was going, like if I'm the baby, my head was going into the toilet and she just felt like God was saying, you are not to send your children off to the world. I want you to, I don't, I want you to teach them. And um, I'm probably butchering that story, but uh I hope mom's not embarrassed of me say, saying that, but it was something where my, I, my parents were definitely involved in my education and they wanted to be uh, integral in that. And so my mom is a dental hygienist by trade and my dad uh, has his degree in urban planning, but he's never actually done anything with that. He's had a lot of different various, he's, a, he's, a, he's had a lot of various jobs over the years. And uh, most recently for the last 20 some years, he's been uh, an orthotist, not an orthodontist, an orthotist. So he fits people with braces uh, for neck, you know, arms, backs, legs, basically everywhere but the teeth. And so um, they just had this vision that they did not want to see their uh, myself or, or my sister get lost to the world. And so um, we were super blessed with the church that uh, 
that we grew up in, that there was a bunch of homeschool families uh, in that as well. And so we started a homeschool kind of support group and really had a great experience with that. So uh, it wasn't uh, just like they got together and commiserated. We actually had classes. And by the time I got to high school, there was a number of us that we actually kind of had like a modular high school where there was a parent that Hey, they said, um, I, I was a ball, I was a biology major, so I'll, I'll host biology class. And so there would be like a dozen of us that would on a certain time, we would go to their house and we would, um, we actually had dissection, uh, and, and some crazy stuff that we would have in like normally in, in a high school situation, we got to do in their living room and, um, I, God bless them for putting up with that smell, uh, afterwards, but another parent, um, they had a Spanish minor, so they taught Spanish to a whole bunch of us. And one of the fathers, he uh, is a he's a lawyer. And so he actually taught us AP constitutional law and AP government, which were some of my favorite classes because he's also like a game master and uh, he loves role playing games. And um, so he actually turned government into a game, which um, is not being played very well at the moment. But uh, it really helped us understand um how the government actually works and me being a more kinesthetic learner i i didn't do very well with books uh growing up uh, until my uh junior and senior year in high school um but being homeschooled and and being involved in the church was something that was really cool and it actually gave my family and i a lot of opportunities to do some ministry my parents had a uh, were super involved with children's ministry and we would actually travel to um I mean, I'm in Pittsburgh, and so we would actually travel to the eastern part of the state to do um, a yearly uh, church retreat for a friend of ours, and we would do the children's ministry for them, and so that they would be able, so that all the people that would normally have to do the children's ministry, they could be a part of the retreat. And so, like, that's not something that we would have been able, that that my sister and I would have been able to do if we were just going to... Um, if we were just going to school. And so that was one of the things where that actually became part of our schooling, where we got to be a part of, uh, of ministry and see that ministry is not something that just mom and dad do, but it's something that I can be a part of no matter how, uh, how old that my sister and I were. So you were in effect uh, doing a homeschool co-op before that was a super popular thing to do. So your, your parents were ahead of the curve, I think, in, in many regards from what you just shared. Uh, YWAM, uh, I'd love to hear where you were based for YWAM. Uh, I always I always kind of chuckle when people are like, well, I was at the Kona base for YWAM, suffering for Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm curious, one, no. where, where were you suffering for Jesus with YWAM? Yeah, so actually kind of connecting to the homeschool thing. Um, at my church, we had uh, the the Youth of the Mission director for the Pittsburgh base. He came in and did an, a school of evangelism for, I think it was like maybe 10 weeks. And so um, maybe it was, I, th I think it was like Wednesday nights for like a 10 week stretch. He came in and taught us how to share the gospel and just really, it was, it was a phenomenal course. And years later, I was involved in actually teaching that. Um, so that was kind of like my sophomore junior and senior year actually that was my sophomore year so i was 15 that was shortly after my crisis of faith so that came at like the perfect time but that was actually part of my schooling and so i got kind of like double credit for that um but i was invited to go on a missions trip with this uh with this school and it was just a short uh, weekend missions trip to new york city and from pittsburgh to new york city is probably a five six hour drive and so um, I actually had a homeschool volleyball tournament the day before that trip and I ended up screaming a whole lot. And, you know, it's a lot of fun and I ended up getting sick. And uh, so this is in the I guess it was been, it would have been the middle of March. Um, this has been in 2001, I believe. It's in the middle of March. And so my very first time ever doing some street evangelism ministry was in Harlem on 125th in Lexington in, uh, in New York city. And the it's raining ice balls. Uh, and so it's, it's sleeting. And, um, I ended up losing my voice later on in the day. And I went from, uh, let me back up a little bit as I had, as I had my crisis of faith and I really decided that I was going to make the, make my, my relationship with the Lord, my own, it was more of a selfish thing. 
And it's like, I realized that I had to get out of jail free card, but I didn't really want to do anything with it. And um, I had no desire to be a missionary or do anything at that point. Cause my thought process with that was why would I want to pay money to do something that's uncomfortable? And so now I got to, now I caught you back up, but the uh, later on in that day, like I had lost my voice and we're in New York city and the evangelism tool that we use was called the wordless book. And it's just the gospel through colors. Uh, so the gold page on the outside represents heaven and God's plan for your life. The dark page represents sin and the problem that, you know, sin separates us from God. The red page represents God's love for us. And Jesus died on the cross for us so that we can be made clean and pure. The white page represents that, that we're clean and pure. We can have that, that new beginning. And then the green page represents new growth and what are your next steps? What are the first steps that you need to do to, to grow in your relationship with the Lord? And so, um, but it's just a book of, of colors. There's no words on there. And so I keep in mind, I have no voice and I end up like chasing after these people to tell them about Jesus. And here I am in the actually in the subway. And I have this book with no words that are just colors and I can't talk. And I have this, and these people look at me like I'm crazy. They eventually just kind of leave me um, because I can't say anything. And I'm realizing internally that I am now willing to, I have had such a change of heart that I am willing to look ridiculous for the gospel. And um, the youth of the mission director, he became a good friend of mine, actually a mentor over the years, but he invited me to come and do their summer program. Um, and I did that for the next couple of years. And then God spoke to me to do a discipleship training school, uh, which is a five month missionary training school. So it was after I graduated high school. So I was 18 and uh, did three months of training and then two months of an outreach. And we, so we went to Israel uh, from the beginning or middle of December to the end of January in 20, uh, 2003 to 2004. So I actually got to spend Christmas Eve in Bethlehem preaching the gospel. Um, you know, a couple hundred yards from where they say Jesus was born. And that's uh, one of my favorite memories of all time. Um, but, uh, you know, after I felt after I finished that school, I felt like God telling me to stick around for a year. And that year ended up becoming two. And then God said another two years, another two years, another two years. It ended up being eight years before God called me into uh, the next season of life into Christian media. So, yeah. Well, that would definitely be a mountaintop experience. Christmas in Bethlehem. It's it's hard to yeah. think of anything cooler than that. Uh, talk to us a bit about your journey with media. You know, I, I can honestly say that podcasting for nine years has changed me in terms of my ability to present, interview, confidence on camera and off camera, yeah. meeting people, you know, meeting people that just have dramatically changed my life. So for you, um, how has your work in different capacities between the TV show and podcasting, like how has God used that to to grow you and shape you? I feel like if we step into that, like God uses it to turn us into what he needs us to be for things that are coming up further down the path. Yeah, I definitely think that um, being in Christian media has been something that it's been really kind of a dream of mine. Um, you know, if you look back at some of the early things that I used to imagine whenever I was a kid, I had a um, a yellow Fisher Price microphone that you could it had a little FM transmitter in it. So if you were like 15 feet away from the radio, you could actually hear yourself on the radio. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. But I wanted to share the gospel with that as people were driving by. Little did I know how, you know, how quickly people can drive through a 15 foot range, um, if at all. But like that was something that was kind of always in my heart. And um, I never thought that I would actually get the opportunity to use media um, the way that I am now. And so I'm, I'm always honored whenever I think about that. But, you know, just being in Christian media, um, I've had the opportunity to meet some really awesome people that are doing some incredible things for the Lord. And the relationships that I've developed through that have been, some of them have been really life-changing. Um, and uh, I, I said earlier about, you know, the way that I, I try to look at life is that, um, you know, I want to be somebody that's available and obedient. And, you know, I've, I think I've thought about that, um, but I've never been able to articulate it up until the point where I got, got a chance to interview uh, Doug Stringer, who's the president and founder of Somebody Cares based out of Houston. Um, and 
he I did a podcast episode with him as a result of him being on uh, on my TV show. I said he told me that he was going to be sticking around for a couple of days. And so I got to interview him for my podcast. And that conversation was one of the most um, foundational for me, just kind of being able to put some definition to some of the things and uh, that I had always I had always, I had always thought of and I always um, tried to live my life that way, but I didn't know how to articulate that. But once you can articulate something, it makes it easier to communicate it and to really live by it rather than um, live by it purposefully. So, but um, I'm trying to think of just how, um, how just working in Christian media and TV has been, um, I mean, there's so many different ways that it has affected my life. And just knowing that the things that were the things that we're doing on the set uh, or in my in my podcast, the things that I'm doing behind a microphone that, you know, you don't know exactly who is going to be listening and who is going to be ministered to by that. But if God's done something in my life and I'm talking about that through, you know, the Bible talks about how uh they they overcame the evil one the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and so whenever we're sharing our testimony whatever method it might might be it might be through a microphone or through a um through a live stream or through broadcast tv or even you know me talking to somebody on your lunch break um you know whenever you're sharing your testimony when it gets out there then god can do something with it once you keep if you keep everything inside of you you're kind of you're limiting what it is how effective that you're going to be for the kingdom of god so i love that even if i'm not the one talking i can help other people share their stories and have other help other people have that opportunity and have that platform so that they can be the ones to to share the gospel and so that's as a producer where i'm behind the camera um at work at the tv station um i don't get to really be in front of the camera hardly ever there's been a few times but uh being able to know like hey if we take the if i can get them to take the conversation a certain way then it's an easier way for them to share the gospel and um i think that's one of the coolest things that i get to do is to help other people share their stories and so that uh, people's lives can be changed yeah, it is a real privilege to be able to elevate others and help them, uh, I feel like, tell their story better uh, and get their message out. That yeah. That is a special skill set, knowing how to uh, pull on the right threads to get people to share uh, in a way that's interesting, but also really articulate and get their message across in a way that's helpful. For me, I always want to see people do that to the point where somebody's like, man, I need to buy that book because I work in the publishing industry. And I, yeah. I love that somebody can watch an interview and then pick up a book and just keep going deeper with that message. Um, we're at a fascinating time in terms of media. Uh, you talked about reach. I mean, all these streaming videos and podcasts, all the things we're doing, they go all over the world. You know, as, oh, yeah. as a lot of us look at our stats on a month by month basis, we see that our podcast episodes get downloaded in countries we're probably never going to visit yet. Somebody right. in the far reaches of Africa or the former Soviet Union, you pick a place, uh, podcasts go all over the globe in places that video isn't always able to go. And so, right. Uh, it's always fun to see what God does with those sorts of things. And then um, in terms of content, it's the Wild West, man. I mean, yeah, uh, really how is, we yeah. like even even communicating like this over StreamYard and broadcasting on all these different social media channels and then the ability to turn that into a podcast right after the fact. Uh, even three, four years ago, we did not have technology and ease of use uh, like we have today. And so I feel like what's on the horizon in terms of communicating and sharing the gospel uh, we're in uh, some amazing territory. Like I, I recently interviewed Craig Walker. I, I think you uh, either had him on or are going to have him on at some point in the not too distant mm -hmm. future. Yeah. Um, but in the last few years, he's reached over 800,000 people for Christ, like literally 800,000 wow. salvation decisions just using wow. digital media, which is kind of mind blowing. But the technology is there. And, and he would say, God's put us in this generation for a reason. And it, we'd be foolish not to use the tools at our fingertips to get out and share the gospel. I feel like we're at a time when it's pretty dark and people are really aware of their need for the gospel, especially in the United States, probably like we haven't been uh, since 9-11 or maybe right. the last yeah. world war. It is a unique time in terms of preaching the gospel and sharing and just bringing hope to people who are uh, probably not in a great place. 2020 was rough. 2021 is turning out to be equally 
uh, as interesting and gosh, people really need Jesus. Um, I think next I'd love to have you talk to us a little bit about what it was like to go to the other side of the camera. I've, I've had an opportunity oh, to, uh, to yeah. be on live TV or, and like do a three camera shoot as a guest, which was eye opening for me as a guy who sends my authors, uh, to run the gauntlet and do TV and media all the time. It was, it was, it was very helpful for me to have to be in the hot seat being interviewed and just having that yeah. experience. Um, I'm curious for you as somebody who's normally on the other side of the camera, how has it been, you know, for times when you've had to be on camera, you're, you're switching roles. What was that like for you? Yeah. So, um, there's been plenty of times where I've actually been interviewed on the show, uh, whether it be the precursor to my show or the, the cafe show that I mentioned earlier, um, but, uh, and then a couple of times talking about different missions trips or things like that on the show that I produce now, but that was, that was a long time ago. Um, I've always just been comfortable just talking to people. Um, and as you can kind of turn off the, oh, this is a camera and I have no idea how many people I'm actually talking to. And you can kind of, you can kind of get over that. Um, but really if you're just talking to one person and you can think, I'm just talking to this person who's asking me a question or this person that might be on the other side of the camera. Um, and that's really helped me kind of get over that. But uh, just recently I had a very different situation where um, being a guest is a lot different than being a host and um, being a host on a podcast and where I'm in control of a lot of different things. Um, and I know where I want to take things is, is one thing, but a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to be a guest host on my own TV show. And that was not my choice. That was not my suggestion. Um, the CEO, the COO, who's also one of the hosts of our daily program, he, um, he and a couple other people said, Hey, John should be uh, on this interview. Um, and I'm not, I'm never on my own show. And, uh, so Tom wasn't able to be on that day. And so he, he needed somebody to fill in. And so, um, they brought up my, they brought up me as a suggestion and I was definitely honored to be able to, uh, to, to do that. And, uh, especially because the guest for that show is somebody that I've actually read a number of his books and, um, it's Dr. Henry cloud. Uh, but the thing that was interesting is we were talking about dating and I'm a 36 year old single guy. And, um, I've learned a lot from his other books. And so. Uh, I'd already kind of, I've already been trying to apply some of the things that he's been talking about. And so it was really cool to be able to be a part of interviewing him. Now it's not just me. Uh, I was one of the hosts. There was actually two other people. There was the other, the other co-host and then like an assistant co-host. Um, and so each have, each of us have different roles. And so it's, you know, it's, if it's just me having a conversation with somebody, I'm used to that with my podcast. Um, but having other people that you kind of have to share the, the questions and the time with, um, that was a little bit different, but it was a lot of fun because they're friends, uh, off, you know, whenever they're not on, on air, we're friends outside of that. And so, um, it was a lot of fun to be able to be a part of that and, uh, just trying to make sure that I'm looking into the camera and, and, uh, talking to the people at home, not just the people that are in the, uh, in, on the set with me. So it was a really cool opportunity and it was definitely strange to watch myself, uh, watch it back. Um, and then just knowing also all the things on the production side of on the, all the things that need to happen on the production side behind the camera and trying to take that producer hat off so that I can just be focused on being a host. That was probably the most challenging, uh, portion for me. Yeah, that can be a, a common challenge. I'm working on my first, uh, book writing project right now. And I, I had a, a author friend of mine, David Amerlin, he lives actually lives in Greece and he writes more in the mainstream secular space. Um, but he interviewed me, I uh, haven't released that episode yet, but, uh, afterwards he was talking to me about, I was like, you know, you're in an interesting position, not unlike you, where I know kind of what happens behind the scenes in the publishing mm -hmm. space. And he's like, you know, too much. And so, yeah. you know, you, you, you try to overthink everything because you're trying to wear your marketing and your sales hat and all the other things. And, and I would imagine it's equally as challenging when you're used to being a producer and having to be on the other side, you, you're, oh, yeah. you're losing control over all the things you normally uh, get to manage, which can always be uh, very challenging uh, yeah. to say the least. Uh, I think next I'd love to hear a little bit about um, 
at this stage, like, wh like what drives you, you know, uh, as, as somebody who's been podcasting for nine years and done a lot in the Christian media space, it's a grind. It's a lot mm -hmm. of work. Um, and I feel like to really embed yourself, whether we're talking about Christian TV and podcasting or Christian publishing, like I work, um, like it, it's, it's a love, it's a calling, like it's mm -hmm. a passion. So on this side of it, in this season, like what, what's the passion, the mission that drives you? So for me, I think the passion is always like helping other people get their stories out. I know God's deposited a lot of things in me. Um, and so I kind of look at every person that I talk to, uh, every, every person that I have an opportunity to interview, whether it be on my podcast or on the TV show, that God has deposited something in them. And through conversation, we can be like miners and we can dig that out and we can pull that out and and polish some of those things and help it become this, this gem that is going to attract people to the gospel. And so through asking questions, through just through making people feel comfortable, making, you know, expending that uh, or using that hospitality gift, um, which is a, a huge part of being an interviewer is, is being hospitable and making other people feel comfortable so that they feel like, yes, I can talk about these things. I can reveal more of myself and be open and honest about some things that I wouldn't necessarily do if I just met somebody. And that's a gift. And that takes, you know, you got to cultivate that, but the more you do it, the better, the better interviews you'll get. And so I love that God uses us uh, as, um, interviewers as podcasters people in media to kind of pull out those conversations to pull out those treasures and to be able to share that and i feel like story is something that is so important and no matter what media changes you know a few years ago we would have never thought that hey sean and i are doing this uh <laughs> this podcast live on facebook and wherever else it's streaming um a couple of years ago we would have never thought that that was a possibility um, but so even though the methods change, the story is, this is still the same. And so we need to be able to communicate that. And I kind of look at podcasting and TV as we're collecting people's stories for the, for all time, for history, so that they're categorized, they're caught, they're, um, they're cataloged, they're put in a library somewhere so that even years from now, um, somebody could find that and their lives could be changed because of how God interacted with that person's life. And so I, even though every, yes, there is a grind. It, it is a lot of work. Um, I look at that as something like, uh, this is a weird uh, analogy, but like Pokemon, you know, you got to catch them all. I feel like there's opportunities for us as, as podcasters, as interviewers, whatever it might be. Anytime that we put out a new piece of content, it's like we're adding another one to the collection that God's entrusting us with. And it's a gift that we can then give back to people. And so if I can help people in that process uh, to share their story better, I'm very excited about that. Well, even in terms of, you know, it being a grind sometime, I mean, that's in every job in, in different seasons, but um, when it's something you're passionate about or something that you love, even if there are long hours, sometimes uh, you don't even notice it because you're just excited so about true. what you're doing. You love what you're doing. Um, and really the, I feel like the longevity of content, that's something worth mentioning. Um, you know, when often when we're starting out, we're like, Oh, how many people have watched this? How many people have downloaded? And we over-focus on stats. Um, but I always think about the emails and the messages you get from somebody mm -hmm. or comments on a YouTube video six months, a year, two yeah. years down the road. And be like, man, that that was for me, that prayer you prayed, that was exactly what I needed to hear. God's been speaking to me about that. And you're like, we recorded that two years ago. Or mm -hmm. or I, what, what's even more fascinating is like so much of the content I do is pre-recorded. And then, you know, something goes out that you pre-recorded two months back and then people respond to it and God uses it to touch them. And so just that staying power, that longevity of media that you know, Lord willing, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, content that you and I are making today is still going to be impacting people right. for the long haul. Just like any creative uh, expression, it's a, you're, we're, we're making a body of work and uh, mm -hmm. putting out there for people to weigh in on and experience. And so uh, I love all the different ways that God uses that for the long haul. Uh, next, I'd love to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, both like books, authors, you know, guests, people who have have influenced you. I think for any, any of us who are in space, you know, we have, uh, you know, the, those books that we've encountered and the related, the authors who, uh, mm -hmm. profoundly shifted, 
uh, the direction of our life, or maybe shifted how we understand uh, our journey as Christians, our place in this space, our mission. So yeah. uh, for you, like what were those foundational books or guests that just impacted you uh, that, you know, when you ask, get asked this question, these are the ones you talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, well, I've got my, my stack of books that, uh, that I can <laughs> reference that have been, that have impacted my life. Um, and these are all different ways. Some of them have been guests, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I can talk about some of the other ones as well, but I mentioned Doug Stringer earlier. Um, he's written several books. Uh, his most recent one is called mending the nets. Um, but his, the stories that he shared with me about how God has used his book has really challenged me to be more of a reader and to be somebody that, um, uh, just to know that something that he wrote a long time ago has like, there's, there's times where he was crossing the border from one country to another, um, in, in like the far, the far side of, of the world. And, he like this guy actually who's you know going through his passport recognizes him and pulls out his own book and says this is you i pray that god would send you here i pray that i would meet you and god brought you here and like just crazy stories like that of how you know god has used books in in uh, in that way but uh I, a couple years ago i read a book called sacred rest by uh dr saunter dalton smith and uh, she was a guest on my program a couple times now. She's been uh, a repeat, uh, but her book was talking about how there's seven different types of rest. Um, let's see if I can remember all of them. There's um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, relational, um, uh, relational, social, and um, sensory. And so those different ways that those different rest tanks basically kind of get filled up and drained at different levels. And we need to be able to, um, to fill those up. Otherwise we're running from a depleted state. And so some of the advice, I mean, she's a medical doctor, but she also came from it, uh, came to it uh, from a spiritual side. And I love the beginning of her book when she said, I don't have time to write this and you don't have time to read this. Um, but let's get, let's get to it. And I was going through some stuff a couple of years ago. So that came just at the right time for me. And it really helped me kind of understand where, I needed to assess myself on a regular basis about where my rest tanks were and where, where I needed, where I was depleted so I could build that back up. Um, you know, there's, there's a ton of people that I've had opportunities to get to know. Um, Michael Anthony, he's another one who's a, he's another fellow podcaster, but he's written, a, he wrote a book called the call for courage. And he's got an amazing story of how um, God has revealed some things about courage for him and how that, you know, how that changes his life. Um, I keep a whole bunch, you can't see this from where you are, but I got a whole bunch of books over here from guests that have signed them for me and, um, uh, yeah, just given to me, them, given them to me over the years. And one of my favorite books is love leads, uh, by Dr. Steve green. Um, he's had a, a tremendous impact in my life. Uh, I just went through his book again recently. Uh, but it's all about how you treat other people and how you lead through relationship. And it's always good to be reminded of that. And um, whether you're the leader of something or you're some you're somewhere along the lines, there's always somebody that's following you, whether it be in a in a uh, in a professional place or it could be in relational like family or church, however it might be, you can always treat people with love and uh, help them help them along their way as well. Um, those are just some of the guests that have come to mind. Um, but, uh, in regards of books that I've read over the last couple of years, um, one of the books that has helped me the most in podcasting is actually this book story worthy by Matthew Dix. Uh, he's not a Christian author by any stretch. Um, but he has helped me grow as a storyteller. And I feel like some of the stories I've told in this podcast haven't been the best, uh, <laughs> haven't been the best, uh, demonstrations of that, but, um, his book has definitely helped me understand what makes a good story. Um, and when you learn how, uh, how to tell your own stories, you can then learn how to tell, how to help other people tell their stories better. And so, um, like looking for those five second moments that every story is really based around. Um, uh, those are, those are some of the key things. And this, the story worthy book is something that I try to go through, um, at least once a year, um, just cause it helps me kind of understand, 
what makes a good story and obviously a good interview out of that as well. So um, if you give me a, a little bit more time, I can I can keep going on about other <laughs> other authors. But uh, um, yeah, there's there's been so many. I mean, I've done over 1300 episodes of uh, my TV program and um, I've had 88 to, to uh, 88 to 100 um, 88 different guests on my podcast and I've done several uh, repeats as well. So there's a lot to choose from. And uh, it, I think the, I think the most difficult part about that question is I don't want to leave anybody out because I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but uh, <laughs> you, you just don't have the time. Well, and, and I think when you have such a long body of work, that's a difficult question to answer because one, you have repeat guests who mean different things to you in different seasons. Uh, and you know, the, the books, the, the guests that really spoke to something you were working through five years ago is different right. than what it was last week or, or last month. Right. And so, um, and, and when you get into that space, I think for overall across all my podcasting through the years, I'm somewhere between eight to 900 episodes. And it, yeah. you know, that's a lot to try to like, what, which one was your favorite? How do you answer that? You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of, it's like, uh, it's like your kids or, uh, you ask an author, what's their favorite book? You know, you love each thing that you create for different reasons. And so yeah. uh, they're all kind of special uh, in their own unique way. Next, I'd love to just have a, a brief conversation about the importance of kind of grassroots up and coming media. Uh, last year, I can speak from the publishing perspective. Uh, there were certain podcasts and YouTube shows that dramatically impacted book sales for us mm -hmm. at Destiny Image in a way that um, exceeded what we saw from traditional TV outlets last year, uh, which was a change. Like we hadn't experienced that where some of our YouTube partners, you know, would impact two or 3000 units in book sales over six to eight weeks, which is just kind of mind boggling and crazy. Yet we, we went through that last year. Uh, I think last year in terms of the election, we saw the ability of live streaming and podcasts to mm -hmm. dramatically influence the cultural conversation, impact how people were going to vote last year. And so um, there's definitely a rising tide of what would, what would have been considered non-traditional or alternative media three or four years ago. Uh, and it's more of the mainstream. Now, I remember when I went back, to, uh, when I went to ICRS, the International Christian Retail Show back in 2013, uh, I recorded, I think, like 18 podcasts at that show, wow. which was kind of crazy at the That's time. Busy. Um, but even back in 2013, people didn't know what a podcast was. Nearly every author I sat down to like, so this is a podcast what what is this where do i find it uh you know and, and think about it we're not too many years later and podcasts are everywhere on every device it's how most of us consume media uh these days so it's in mm -hmm. interesting to see how things have shifted and grown but um i'd love to hear your kind of your unique perspective on this rising tide for all the quote unquote alternative media just because i feel like you have a, a unique vantage point both as a tv producer and a podcaster uh, i'd love for you to just weigh in on kind of the growing importance of uh, this, what, what we would probably still call a new media space. Yeah. Um, I think the more we can just get out there, however we get out there, the better it is, you know, don't, don't, don't be, don't limit yourself by the means that you have at the moment. You know, you don't need a big studio setup or a cool green screen effect like Sean has. I mean, I've got a, I've got a cover over my window just to blot it, just to block out the, uh, the light a little bit. So you, you know, it's not going to blow out the image here. You can do a lot of unique things in a small space. And, you know, you, we, everybody has a cell phone. You can, you can go Facebook live or YouTube live through that and reach a ton of people that you might never have had a chance to before. Um, I love that. I absolutely love that because you now have made TV accessible. You have made media accessible for everybody. And you don't need to have a huge budget uh, to, you know, to just upload something. And, um, you know, whether it's good or bad, it's really depending on how it's used and what is communicated. And I think just because people have used this media for negative things doesn't mean that, that uh, we as people sharing the gospel need to say, oh, that's that's evil. No, we need to say, hey, we're going to make our voice louder on that platform where, you know, they're going to try to silence us. No, we need to be louder. We need to be more clear. We need to get better at sharing that. And but it, it's just lowered the access point for people to jump on. You know, the the on ramp for people to get on this highway is a lot easier than it was in the past. 
you don't need a crew of, of 15 people to do a TV program. You can set up in your bedroom and just talk to a camera and that makes a world of difference or, you know, talk on a microphone and start a podcast. I absolutely love it. And now that the, um, you know, things like StreamYard where we're live on Facebook and I see a, a few of friends of mine have already commented about this, about our conversation here. And that's really cool. I love that interaction because, you know, one of the things that is difficult about TV and podcasting is that in general, we don't get to interact with the people that are watching at that moment. But with this, with this new media, you can, and it's, it's like a, an immediate thing. You know, normally you would have to, you know, we have a, at work, we have a, a prayer line so people can call in and, you know, we can get, you know, our prayer partners will talk to them and sometimes we'll get a prayer request. And it's like, that's really cool that we're able to do that and, you know, share their prayer requests on, on the program and pray for them right then. But, you know, it's so, it's really, really cool to see how through StreamYard and, and Facebook and, and YouTube, like the comment section is really interesting. There's a lot of shows that I watch on YouTube. Um, and that's where I honestly, that's where I get a lot of news now too. Um, somebody that I like watching on a pretty regular basis is Tim pool. He's a, a YouTuber news commentator, and um, he has a very interesting podcast and he goes live on his podcast every night at eight. And um, the comments are on that, that are pretty amazing. And they actually spend some time interacting with people. And I think, you know, even though in this world of social distancing, um, social media has become our our way of communication and it's not just through text or zoom like there's other ways that you can you can connect with some of your favorite people through uh, through this medium and I think it's really cool and it's up to us as Christians to really use this to share the gospel uh, and to not let it be used for just other means I mean we can be purposeful about it or we can just use it as a force as a force of entertainment but uh, if we're gonna use this let's 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 do it effectively for the kingdom. Well, I love that you brought up how the barrier to entry has shifted. Uh, you know, I've got a bunch of fancy equipment now, uh, but mm -hmm. when I started out podcasting nine years ago, uh, one, the software was just pretty bad of what you, yeah. what you like, if you weren't a sound engineer, uh, wow. Like you had to self teach and uh, it, it was pretty rough out there. But honestly, it, when people talk to me about getting started with podcasting and live streaming, I tell them, don't spend any money at first. Look at what you sure. have and start creating with what you already have. You like, you already have some kind of a microphone and headphones and a phone or a laptop, something uh, that you could start with. And I always tell people, get 10 episodes in and then start getting fancy, like find your voice, figure out what you want to do. Do I, do you want to do this for the long haul? Um, Cause one of my biggest frustrations is when people will go out and they'll drop a thousand dollars or more on a bunch of equipment they don't know how to use. And the technological challenges like holds them back from moving forward and creating and, and getting out there and doing stuff. So uh, yeah, that would be my encouragement is just start with what you have uh, and build from there. And then what, what, once that. you're going to lock it in and, and go for something in the long haul, then by all means, as you're able to upgrade your equipment along the way and mm -hmm. you know, you can improve and iterate and get better just like you do with any other uh, creative pursuit. Uh, John, almost time for us to wrap up, but kind of, yeah big picture, all the kind of trails that we've gone down today, like for the people who are watching this, people who listen to this later on the podcast, like what's your takeaway? What do you want people to have gleaned from listening to different parts of your story? Yeah, I guess my biggest thing is that God has a purpose for your life and we need to accept that purpose and our identity in him. Because once you accept your identity in him, uh, then you start to value yourself differently. And you look at yourself through what God said. God says that I have value and I have worth. Therefore, you start to look at other people that they have value and worth. And if you don't get anything else besides that, know that God has value in you. And if you can then accept that God has value in other people, you're going to treat people differently uh, the way that God really wants them to be treated and wants you to treat them. But as you do that, then you'll start to see that God has these intricacies and, and value in, in these people. And as you talk with them, as you care for them, then you're going to see those things come to light. And I, I mentioned earlier about kind of digging for gems in somebody like we need to be miners and we can do that through really caring for people through conversation. And don't just, don't just have a conversation with somebody to get to a goal. 
enjoy the journey in that process as well. You know, the whole the whole concept of my podcast along the way is that there's moments in our life where our hearts are burning because Jesus is interacting with us, but we're too busy to really recognize that that's what's going on. And so our hearts are burning and there's this thing that's going on, but we're not paying attention. And I want us, I want myself, I want you, I want all of us to be people that are attentive to the Holy Spirit, attentive to the value that God is is trying to tell us about this other person. Give them a word of encouragement and see what happens. And you'll see that along the way, people's lives are going to be changed because they've had an encounter with you who represents Jesus Christ. And John, for the listeners and viewers who'd like to connect with you, find out more about your podcast, where do we discover you on the web? Uh, so my website is alongtheway.media. And so you can see all of my episodes there. And uh, but I, my podcast is pretty much anywhere. Uh, I, I, sh I should be listed everywhere. There's a podcast. Um, you can find it there. But just along the way, all one word. And then my TV show is called Hope Today on Cornerstone Television Network. And so that's hope.ctvn.org. Uh, I should have told you that before the show got started. But uh, uh, yeah, you can check that out. And that that's only a half an hour. Uh, program and uh, we've got some great hosts and we've got some great guests on there and uh, it's really cool to be able to see how God how God uses media for his glory and like we do with every episode we'll have links in the show notes places where you can connect with John and stream or download his wonderful podcast wherever great podcasts are found and subscribe to our I guess the the new term is follow uh, because apparently subscribing implies some form of payment so i because apple podcast switched to following a podcast really? so wherever you want to follow start following john as he goes along the way uh it's time to bring this episode of the sean tabbit show to a close many thanks for being a part of my conversation with john monterazzo uh for more on john's podcast once again head over to his website you can find that at alongtheway.media and john i just want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today it's been an honor it's been a joy i love getting to know you better thanks for being on the show thank you